What are the relevance of angels? The next question we may have is, are angels still relevant? Do we need them today as Christians filled with the Holy Ghost anointing? A glimpse at the lives of the distinguished individuals in the Bible reveals that they all experienced angelic fellowship. Abraham encountered an angel who tiled the way for the achievement of his destiny. Lot was reliably guided out of Sodom by an angel just before the city was destroyed. Daniel surpassed in strength and operated the wisdom of angels because he had such a wonderful fellowship with them. Also, Peter, who was locked up in prison, was released and left to safety by an angel. Also, the man John, who saw what was impossible for natural eyes to see, said an angel showed the entire book of Revelation. There is almost no person of distinction in scriptures who did not have physical, real proof of angelic fellowship. God has said, I, the Lord, do not change, so you, the descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. Malachi 3.6 It follows that what he did yesterday, he is also doing today. There is a lot attached for this time we live in. Angels are an indispensable and essential part of God's package for the redeemed. The anointing cannot replace the service of angels. Jesus Christ was born of the Holy Ghost, and he had the Holy Ghost anointing, and yet he required the services of angels. It is great to think that Jesus believed in angels, and he enjoyed their ministry, even as the Son of the Most High God. An angel announced his arrival. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Luke 1, 30 and 31. When he was born, a mighty host of angels came amongst the shepherds and announced his coming. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you, you will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Luke 2, 8-14 When danger appeared because of the news of his birth, and the angel spoke to Joseph to move to Egypt with the baby Jesus, that the scripture may be fulfilled, Matthew 2, 13-15 says, When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night, and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. After the tempter left Jesus on the mountain, angels came and tended to him. Matthew 4.11 says, Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended him. As we previously mentioned, angels were present with Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, as seen in Matthew 26, 53 through 54. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father, and he will at once send me more than 12 legions of angels? But how then should the scriptures be fulfilled that it must be so? Another striking event was at the resurrection. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. Matthew 28, 2. That stone was placed there permanently by the enemies. There was no thought of it ever being moved. I cannot tell what type of equipment was used in placing the stone there, but an angel came and rolled it away. Two angels were later seen at the head and foot where Jesus was laid, as seen in John 20:12 and seeth two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And when it was the time of ascension, Acts 1, 10 through 11 says, And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. 
Please note that Jesus was sent after the order of Moses. For Moses truly said to the fathers, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him you shall hear in all things, whatever he says to you. Acts 3.22 Moses was predicting in those times of the coming of Jesus. So Jesus came after the order of Moses, and we have also come after the order of Jesus. Accordingly, if Moses' ministry had angels in it, and Jesus' ministry engaged angels in all its aspects, then we also are to be attended by angels as well. God told Moses, Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you on the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Exodus 23, 20. There are things provided for us at this age also, but we do not hope to get there without recognizing the ministry of angels. They are heavenly authorities made accessible to us by God to bring forth His plan and purpose for our lives. You cannot afford to be restricted or lost in this time when the redeemed has taken off on a flight. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being priests for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. Hosea 4.6 purpose of angels. Here we discuss the reason we have angels. Firstly, angels make the word of God come to pass. The angels are the performance hosts of God. Angels follow the word of God to ensure that it produces. In the Bible, the phrase, the Lord of hosts will perform it, is used often, any time an outstanding prophecy is given, which cannot be humanly explained. Mary was told, A virgin shall conceive and bear a child called Emmanuel, and the Lord of hosts will do it. God used his host to bring his word to life. When God was going to give Sarah a fruit, he also used his angel, as we see in Genesis 18.10. Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent which was behind him. The very thing occurred when Elizabeth's barrenness came to an end in the book of Luke. The angels of God have the performing license to carry out anything that comes out of God's mouth. Angels are the attack troops that deal with our opponent. They always get the answer and victorious after every act. They are a defense in conflict. The psalmist said, The God of Jacob defend thee, send thee help from his sanctuary and remember all thy offerings. Some trust in horses, others in chariots, but God will be a defense for those who walk in the covenant. When others are falling, they will be standing upright, because God is their defense. Psalm 20. David had the angels so busy that he never failed any battle all through his time. David often pursued his opponent with the help of angels. Psalm 35, 5-7 says, May they be like chaff before the wind, with the angel of the Lord driving them away. May their path be dark and slippery, with the angel of the Lord pursuing them, since they hid their net for me without cause, and without cause dug a pit for me. In 2 Kings 19, we also read of how just one angel went on a defense assignment and took out a total of 185,000 Assyrian soldiers. If a single angel can do that much, imagine what 72,000 angels can do on your behalf. This is because we also have access to whatever Jesus had access to while he was on earth. Anytime God had a battle, he set the angels loose. When Satan waged war in heaven, the angels of God won. If Satan caused chaos in heaven, he would not hesitate to try to do the same in your residence. But angels are all the protection we need. That was Jesus' way, and it should be ours likewise. Angels form an impervious hedge around every redeemed child of God, which make them untouchable. He was blessed with his angelic hedge so much that Satan complained to God about it. Job 1.10, Have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? You have blessed the work of his hands, so that his flock and herds are spread throughout the land. We need to be conscious of the angelic protection that surrounds you and about all you have. That edge is always present. The psalmist said, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. Psalm 34, 7. 
The term encampeth is in the present continuous tense, implying they are always there. After Elisha prayed for his servant's spiritual eyes to be opened, he saw the mountains round about full of horses and chariots of fire. 2 Kings 6.17 And Elisha prayed, Open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. That was the angelic hedge. The angels are real. They are always there. They are invisible powers with sturdy capabilities sent to minister to us. The evil one knows it, so why not use it against him? Say, Satan, you have no more access into my life and affairs. I have the angelic hedge around me, around my house, around all that I have. You cannot get in here. God has given them a charge. They are eternally obedient fighters. They will hearken to the voice of his word. They have a job to bear me up upon their wings. They will make it possible for me to tread upon the lion and the adder, and nothing shall by any means hurt me. I am surrounded. They do the pleasure of God. Psalm 103, 20 through 21. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his, who do his pleasure. In the course of making the word of God effective, the angels minister God's pleasure to us as the redeemed. Beloved, I pray that in every way you may succeed and prosper and be in good health, just as your soul prospers. 3 John 2 Angels are committed to obeying God's commands, so you can send them to carry out whatever God has commanded concerning you. The word says, tell those who do what is right that things will go well with them. They will enjoy the results of the good things they've done. Isaiah 3.10 They cause the saints to walk on evil-free paths. There are evil zones in life. However, you have safety in God. You must realize the dignity of God's name and the greatness of his power. The Bible says he is committed to ensure your all-around safety. The angels of heaven are charged to keep you, such that even the toes of your feet are not permitted to be hurt. Say, The Lord is the one who keeps me safe. Oppose you, let the Most High God be like a home to you. Then no harm will come to you. No terrible plague will come near your tent. The Lord will command his angels to take good care of you. They will lift you up in their hands. Then you won't trip over a stone. You will walk on lions and cobras. You will crush mighty lions and poisonous snakes. The Lord says, I will save the one who loves me. I will keep him safe because he trusts in me. Psalm 91, 9 through 14. God has directed the angels to keep you in all your ways. They deliver the saints. Whatever prison the devil has shut you up in, the angels of God will bring you out. Daniel was thrown out of the den of hungry lions, but the Lord sent his angel who shut the mouth of the lions. The lions were no threat thanks to angelic intervention. In the book of Acts, we read of Peter locked up in a prison. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Acts 12, 7 says, Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said, and the chains fell off Peter's wrists. Peter was sleeping between two soldiers when the angel appeared, yet the guards were unaware of what was happening. Just by raising Peter up, the chains fell off on their own accord. They did not have to use any key. Peter was safely led out of prison to where the angels were being called on to act on his behalf. And when he knocked at Mary's door, the others disbelieved Rhoda's report, saying it must be Peter's angel at the door, not Peter himself. The deliverance involved more than just being released from prison. He was in town, yet could not be touched, because whosoever the Son of God shall set free is free indeed. The angels ensure that you are free mentally, free spiritually, free socially, free financially, because that is their job. They execute your destiny. When God was going to rescue Israel from Egypt after 400 years of bondage, 
God sent an angel ahead of Moses to take them out of Egypt to Canaan. Exodus 23, 20. I am sending an angel ahead of you. He will guard you along the way. He will bring you to the place I have prepared. We are all children of destiny, which God has prepared for us, even before we were born. Romans 8.30 says, And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Satan tried to destroy the destiny of Joshua, the high priest, by putting fitly garments upon him. But the angel of God ordered their removal and a change of garments for Joshua. Zechariah 3, 1 through 5 says, Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right side to accuse him. The Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is not this man a burning stick snatched from the fire? Now Joshua was dressed in filthy clothes as he stood before the angel. The angel said to those who were standing before him, Take off his filthy clothes. Then he said to Joshua, See, I have taken away your sin, and I will put fine garments on you. Then I said, Put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him while the angel of the Lord stood by. There is a guardian angel in charge of you. In times of crisis, you may ask for a special dispatch, but there is an angel permanently responsible for seeing that God's plan and purpose for your life is fulfilled. Jesus said even children have angels, and they behold the face of his Father in heaven. Matthew 18.10 says, See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven. They release answers to prayers. Daniel 10, 12 through 13 says, Then he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me twenty-one days, and behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had been left there alone with the kings of Persia. It is the pleasure of the Father that when you ask anything according to his will, it is given you. But see how Daniel suffered. He was praying and fasting for 21 days, and the Bible says his request has been granted right from the first day it was made. But the prince of Persia was standing on the way. A fallen principality blocked the answer, but by the time a chief principality from heaven got there, the answer was released. For prayer breakthrough, the angels are available on the line. Engage them.